Welcome once again to another edition of PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. I'm Norm Waymer in the PCW Command Center, and what a show we have for you today. We're going to focus on the PCW Heavyweight Championship and all the turmoil that's involved as uh, D-Ray 3000 still the champion. A lot of debate, though, whether he should be the champion. Also on the show, we're going to show you the Mysterious Crimson. We're also going to show you Toledo's own Brian Castle on this episode. And also, my sit-down that I had in the home of Dr. Jerry Graham Jr., which will help clear out where his head is on all this, and including the rematch, which comes up on April the 21st. Well, let's focus uh, somewhat here, though, on the PCW Heavyweight Championship and it was, uh, it, it was it, this is amazing history between these two guys, between D-Ray 3000 and Andy Shane. It all goes back really to two years ago where Andy Shane was challenging or actually defending his PCW Heavyweight Championship against D-Ray 3000. It was a championship versus hair match. If Andy Shane won the match and retained his title, then D-Ray 3000 would lose his hair, but uh, obviously uh, what that was not supposed to happen because what happened in that match was actually that D-Ray 3000 won the PCW Heavyweight Championship. And afterwards, Andy Shane just absolutely lost his mind. They attacked D-Ray 3000. They ended up shaving his head even though D-Ray 3000 won the PCW Heavyweight Championship. And D-Ray never forgot that and probably never will and that's what really ignited this this whole ugly feud that's going to continue on april the 21st and we will show you the match that was just from a couple of weeks ago at the international boxing club we'll do that a little bit later on in this episode but what we're going to do first we're going to take you to our first match of the evening it's the mysterious crimson and you're going to find out what he's all about Soon to be walking down the aisle. He is from the Orient. Let's welcome Andrew Lee. Andrew Lee making his way to the ring. It's PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. I'm Sean Boomer Bratton, along with Grizzly, Norm Weimer, in the ring, doing the ring introductions. For Andrew Lee, trained by Truth Martini, but Boy, does he have his work cut out for him today. I almost feel bad for the kid. I, well, I, I really do, Grizzly. Well, these uh, Asian wrestlers are very quick, they're very dangerous, and they're, they're, they're always moving, or they're always three or four moves ahead of what they do, so. Well, that smile that's on Andrew Lee's face, take a look at it, because here in about 30 seconds, you're not gonna see him smiling anymore, unfortunately. Again, Andrew Lee really, really, has his work cut And out. his opponent, he is from the Broken Mirror, weighing in at 240 pounds, he is Crimson. This is one of the most dangerous, dark, no soul, no heart wrestlers. I'll tell you, Boomer, this man, I've been in the ring with him, and he, whether you're seven foot tall or five foot tall, this guy will wrestle you at your size. He's one of the reasons I'm not in that ring anymore. You want to stay far, far away from this guy. I can't believe Andrew Lee, who I'm sure wants to make a name for himself here in PCW, would sign the match with Crimson. Crimson is one of the hardest hitting wrestlers I have ever oh, seen. He is very dangerous. The moves he's able to come up with in his arsenal, there's always something new. Every time you see Crimson, he's always changing, always evolving, always a new look for Crimson. And Norm, you've known Crimson for years. You go way back when he was basically a totally different person. Yeah, there's no question about it. The transformation has been pretty amazing. The transformation in Crimson has been pretty amazing. And uh, I, I will say this, on top of everything else, as, as vicious and, and off the hook and just, just plain bordering on crazy, look at this. Blowing that's the mist. Pure, that's pure evil, Norm, right there. Yes, it is blowing the pure evil into the air, making he, the referee take off that shroud of his. He has something else in his arsenal, which is called the touch of evil. And we're going to, don't be surprised oh. if you see that tonight. 
as long as he's administering the touch of evil to Andrew Lee and not to any of us. That's going to leave a handprint for about three weeks. I think he's actually bleeding right now from the chest. Snap mares him out of the corner, just whips him over with that devastating off the ropes. That knee right into the face of Andrew Lee. That could require plastic surgery. Well, yeah, you know, we've seen this before. I, I don't know if he cares whether he wins the match or not. The only thing he wants to do is torture his opponent. And torturing is what we're seeing right now. Bringing Andrew Lee up to his feet and just slapping him, humiliating him right across the face, oh, Grizzly. He has no heart. Like I said, I've been on the receiving end of Crimson's torture, and that's what it is. Norm said it. It's torture, Boomer. But I respect Crimson. He's Sunset a great flip. wrestler, and he does what he needs to do. He marches to his own drum, and he does what he needs to do to take his opponents out. I mean, seriously, how do you prepare for a guy who's crazy? I, I don't think you can. You can't, Norm. You just go in there and you got to you just do it as you go along. That's what I had to do. Yeah, that didn't work. Uh, you might want to try again. I think he needs plan C at this point. Dragon screw, maybe. Nope. Blocks that leg down. He comes off the ropes. What are we going to see? That clothesline to the back of the head. Nice You can't move. even see it coming. Decapitation, pure and simple. Just end this right now. I think the referee just needs to step in at this point and say, hey, enough's enough. But uh, uh, Crimson's still taking the attack to Andrew Lee. Andrew Lee keeps fighting. He doesn't want to give up. It's good to see Andrew Lee in his first and most likely last appearance here in PCW. He's going to make Andrew Lee remember this match for a long time, believe me. Back elbow and Crimson just shook it off. He just shook it off. Look at that. Spins him around. What are we going to see? Oh, my goodness. He's just beating that chest. Oh, my God. Nice move. Another nice move. Driving that knee. Oh, my. We're, we're seeing things again from Crimson as we look at him. Now we're seeing things that we haven't seen before from Crimson. He's taking brutality to a whole new level here. Has him set reverse DDT maybe? This is, oh, that's the witch's wheel. That'll put anyone, no. Nope, he's. Oh, my goodness. That was the witch's wheel. That's he wants the to sign for the touch of evil. Right, he wants to help Andrew Lee learn, you know, how to take a brutal beating and still be able to get up and come back to work the next day. That's I'm how not, Crimson is. I'm not sure Andrew Lee's going to be able to go to work the next day or for the next week for that matter. Stumbling there, around. There it oh, is. Look, touch oh, of evil. God. Touch of evil. Right into the throat, into the and, oh. and now a, oh, a choke slam on top of it. He choke slammed him with his fingers in his mouth for crying out loud. Yeah, yeah you gotta he's, end he's that. Done. Gotta end that. The winner is Crimson. The winner, Norm. You're si Norm. You're seriously not going up there, are you? Not yet. Okay, good. Don't, don't. And now security is out here. You can nice feed out job. as many security guys as you want. It's not gonna do any good. These guys better be careful because it's like handling a King Cobra when you handle Crimson. The guy, like I said, is very dangerous. I'd prefer a King Cobra or a King Kong. I'm not sure if, uh, I, I think Andrew Lee might want to take up something different for a career, you know, maybe a professional chess player. Oh. I don't know, something with less less physicality. Yeah. Because this one's going to hurt and it's going to hurt for a long time. I mean, he's had, he's got to have some upper spinal injuries, uh, neck, and he's just... The winner of the fall of the match, Crimson! There's going to be injuries in places that doctors aren't even going to be able to identify. Crimson making a statement here in PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. Oh, this looks bad. The kid, he's, he's busted up. He's got some lumps and swelling. Look at that. He's definitely not looking good. But Crimson is one of them kind of wrestlers, Boomer. He is 100% brutality, get the job done, and, you know, that's it. He got the job done about 15 times over out there. Well, but, hauling him off. But I've been on the receiving end of what Crimson dishes out, and it's not good. No, no, there's nothing good about that at all. Somebody's gonna feel this sound. Your career will occupy one third of your life. Shouldn't it be fun, profitable, and secure? The Toledo Academy of Beauty has successfully trained over 10,000 graduates in the cosmetology industry. Call 419 478 6664 free brochure. We also offer beauty services by supervised students. Even professional wrestlers like Dr. Jerry Graham is a client. Have fun, be cool, choose the right beauty school. It's Toledo Academy of Beauty. 
I'm John Becerra, the car credit medic from Matthews Ford, Oregon. If you've had problems with your credit history, we can fix your pain. All you need is proof of income. You don't even need to be employed. I guarantee you will get financed with the car credit medic here at Matthews Ford, Oregon. Stop in and see me and I will put you in a late model car, truck, van, or SUV and you will likely drive away same day. At Matthews Ford, Oregon, your past credit problems are no problem. Experience the Matthews difference with the exclusive car credit medic, Matthews Ford, Oregon, Navarre Avenue, east of I-280, seven days a week. It's the Beer Stube, located at 5333 Monroe Street, the home of the NFL Sunday ticket. Catch your favorite game at the Beer Stube. We have a brand new kitchen open daily for lunch and dinner at 11 a.m. At the Beer Stube, it's a Wi-Fi hotspot and enjoy free pool from Sunday through Wednesday and premiere karaoke Wednesday night through Saturday night. It's where bar, grill, and good times come together. It's the Beer Stube, 5333 Monroe Street, online at ToledoBS.com. The finest in sweepstakes action can be found daily at the Lucky 7 Internet Cafe. The Lucky 7 Internet Cafe, 2349 Lasky Road across from Somerset Hall. At the Lucky 7 Internet Cafe, you'll find full access to the internet. So come on in, surf the internet, check your email, and you'll find lots of games. Along with daily prizes and, of course, the finest in sweepstakes action. It's the Lucky 7 Internet Cafe, located at 2349 Lasky Road across from Somerset Hall. Somebody's gonna feel this sound. Your winner of the match, the mysterious Crimson and Crimson, absolutely in dominating fashion against Andrew Lee. But don't think that's the last you're going to see of Crimson by any stretch of the imagination. Coming up next here, we're going to take you to Toledo's own Brian Castle, the world's most huggable wrestler, as he takes on Rob Frost. Norm's still a little wobbly from... All right, your next match of the evening is Dr. scheduled Graham. for one fall. Soon to be walking down the aisle, weighing in at 210 pounds, he is Rob Frost. Rob Frost making his debut in PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. Of course, Grizzly, we've seen with the uh, talent merger between PCW and CIW, obviously every wrestler wants in because this is the place to be. Absolutely. We're talking the best of the best. The so best of the best venues right here. Every wrestler wants in. The problem is when you get here, the competition level is pretty gosh darn oh, fierce. Oh, that's above and beyond. You you have the competition and what you need to do to audition in there is, <laughs> it's almost impossible. So he's got his hands full with uh, the big guy. Yes, he does. Of course, Frost. I used to be uh, the tag team partner of Brian Castle. And, and his opponent. From Toledo, Ohio, weighing in at 340 pounds, he is the world's most huggable wrestler, Brian Castle. But Brian's a little too nice. I mean, he's got a, a too a, a too good of a good streak, if you will, Boomer. Well, I think we need that in the world. He though. needs to have a little mean streak in him. Well, I tell you what, though, if you talk about having a a good streak in him. That good streak has not held him back at all here in PCW. Right. Brian Castle, obviously a huge fan favorite. He is the world's most huggable wrestler and administering Keep hugs going. to everyone. And I'm sure he wants to give a hug to Rob Frost, although we're gonna talk about death from a hug, which is Brian Castle's finishing maneuver. Sean Boomer Bratton, along with Norm Waymer and Grizzly, as we're seeing the world's most huggable wrestler. How does it feel, Norm, to get hugged from Brian Castle? You feel all warm and fuzzy inside? I was trying to get out of the ring and get back here before it <laughs> happened, and I, I wasn't quick enough. No, you knew he was going to catch you. And since you're on the end, I was going to kind of shove you out there anyway. He wouldn't be in my top ten. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying that. He should give the referee a hug. I bet he does. I bet he does. What's the over-under? Well, Brian, Brian needs to make those hugs a little more vicious and a little more, you know, don't be such a nice guy up there, Brian. Should the referee be high-fiving Brian Castle? I'm Seriously. surprised Grizzly's not over here going, hey, I think the referee's in his back pocket just because they gave a high-five. Are you, are you thinking now that the fix is in on this one? Uh, it could be because... You are just so jaded, Grizzly. You are just so jaded. Well, I just, he's, Brian's disappointing. When he was my partner and, and I was his manager, I thought, you know, but he's, I'm sorry. 
He obviously saw the light, did he? He saw the, I saw the darkness, and you gotta live in the darkness a little bit to, you know, compete in the light. And look at that now, Brian Castle, look at that. agility, wow. Breaks the arm, has the reversal, boom. He clearly went for the eyes, but uh, Frost got out of the way before he got poked in the eye. Very astute of you, good call on that. Let's see, is Brian, you know, so tell me how nice the guy is there. He went for the man's eyes. Now Brian Castle circling up. Collar and elbow headlock now from Rob Frost. He has that cinched in, giving up a lot of size and power to Brian Castle. Castle sends him in, off the ropes, crisscross. We hardly ever see this. And here's the crisscross. Who's going to tire out first? Stop sign. Look up. Smash him. Oh. Come on, cheap shot. And now pulls him right into the headlock. I like that, personally. It seems like there's a double standard here. Boy, Norm, he's got that headlock in deep, doesn't he? Yeah, there's no, well, no question. And another crisscross? All right, what's gonna happen here? <laughs> oh, you gotta laugh at that one, Grizzly. Hey, Brian's got amazing agility for somebody his size. And a great sense of humor, and a good ability to smack. Two pokes in the eyes with the stum, I clearly seen that. And a big hip toss. His eyes look fine to me. Another hip toss brings him over. Frost is in a world of hurt right now. Walks right into that slam. Boom, and Frost goes down. What are we gonna see now? Leg drop maybe, he's off the ropes. And that's a pretty big leg to be dropped on a cross. I'm surprised Frost was able to kick out of that one. I think, yes. there, was an eye, I think there was an eye rake on that one too. No, that was that was pretty decent that was right clean. there. I taught I, Brian, that's I taught him how to do them splashes like that. Okay, so anything that looks good, you taught him to do. Did you get that norm over there? Yes. How about does? the hugs? Yeah, the hugs. Did you, no, I didn't teach him. Okay. I tried to get him away from that, but okay. you know, what are you gonna do? Some devastating go. kicks. Keep he working was, on that he leg. He had to pick the hugging thing up from somewhere. Oh, yeah, exactly. well, it wasn't for me, Norm. Are you sure? Well, not for me. I want to Google that. The only hug I'm used to is a bear hug, putting the guy down on the canvas. And I got to say, though, Rob Frost, as we talk about people trying to make a mark here in PCW, especially with this new talent merger, talent exchange between PCW and CIW, Rob Frost is really acquitting himself very well. Well, this is what you do. You got to get the big guy off his feet. You got to yeah. work on the knees and work on the legs. Everybody's the same height when they're laying on the mat. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. I agree with that, Norm. Castle was able to roll him up, but you saw how nothing was going in the favor of Rob Frost when the fight was standing up. Bring the fight down, take that leg out from Brian Castle, and now Frost really has the advantage right now. The question is, oh, there we go. can he capitalize on it? Yeah. He's not going to pin him that way. No, He's no, got to no, do no. a lot more work than that. All right, stay on that leg, Rob. Stay on that leg. Don't let him up. Ooh. It is going to be tough for Castle as he works his way back up to his feet. Still going to be tough for him to gain any leverage uh, pushing off of There we leg. go. Beautiful move. And well, no, like wait. How is that a beautiful move? He pulled his hair. Yeah, exactly. Had a no, he, got, he had a, his forehead and there. No, there, no. That, there. Yeah, that where was, his hair is, right on his forehead. That was a perfect move. Oh, my goodness. A great move. And really trying to, uh, he's got that leg grapevine, really trying to, and now just drops on that. Boy, that takes care of your, that, the hamstring, your, you know, all the uh, tendons in that knee. Are really you could dislocate a patella up. doing that. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at... at oh, that patella. Yeah, tell us about the patella. Always about the patella. When you're wrestling a guy Brian's size, you, you, you patella, that's what you got to go for. Brian looks like he needs a hug. Grizzly, it's all you. Uh, we, he won't find a hug from Grizzly. Hey, look at that. Reversal. Had him up for a Samoan drop. Oh. And a clothesline. Hassel feeding off the energy here of the PCW crowd. Frost goes in. And that spinning hammer. Castle covers. Frost is nope. out on two. All right, way to go, Rob. No eye rake on that one either. That's no, the referee was counting a little fast there, but Rob little sensed fast. that. Yes, Rob sensed that. Sending Frost in, hits that corner hard. Oh, this could be bad. Rob, you got to get out of there. French there we go. The boot up Excellent right into his move. Face. Excellent counter. Oh, look at the strength. Look at that power, Norm. Oh. Walks him back in. 
back first into that top turn. Oh, I know what's coming here. Death from a home? Absolutely. Oh. That's it. That's done. It's over with death he from a home. It ain't over yet. What are we going to see? Oh, it's oh, over my. now. That, yeah, that's it. That's it. The floor actually shook over yeah, so here. I taught him that. Oh, that's the one you taught. I taught him that, and uh, he capitalized on it. But now he should be over there teaching Frost a lesson for being in the You're winning the final match. There. Too nice of a guy. World's most huggable wrestler, Brian Castle. Excellent showing from Brian Castle. Back we are, PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. You just saw in the last segment the win by Brian Castle, Toledo's own, and the world's most huggable wrestler. But his night did not end there because right after the match, I got an interview with Brian Castle ringside, and you'll never believe who showed up. Let's take a look. Welcome to the new start of PCW, baby! That finishing move, death from a hug. Death from a hug. Love it. It's a joke. It's a word on play on words. Get it? No, he's so anyways, <laughs> making fun of the okay. move I taught him. Anyways, I'm back in PCW. Glad to be home. Glad to be back. I'm ready to take on all comers. Sean Casey, Andy Shane, D-Ray 3000. I don't care. But you have punks like Crimson beating up little kids like Andrew Lee. No business being in the I ring together. Yet somehow he gets that match and he just destroys him. And I won't stand for it. Wow, wow, wow. He's got a point. Then the kids should have been just in the said ring the magic words. Well, now Crimson here, is here. Here comes a guy that knows what it's all about right here. And Crimson's here. Of course, we have security as well. Norm, you just might want to walk away from this. I'm a little nervous that it's happening right in front of us. Crimson, what, would, what are you doing out here? I wouldn't take this stuff off of him either. I'm not sure Crimson's going to talk. I'm reasonable. We can talk about this. And Brian wants to talk with them? No. He's got to see your face. Oh, you going to take the shroud off? I, uh, oh, there the we go. Mist. Yeah, take the mask off again, Brian. And now, the, the touch of evil? Is that yeah. what he's oh, saying? Come on! Before? He's putting the touch of evil Stop on it. He's got that applied right to Brian Stop. Castle. Security, get him off of him! We got all the security out here. They got to do something. Here. Come on, break this up, guys. Get him off of him. Boomer. Okay, who's Get him fault out of is here. that? Brian Castle's laying there in a mess. He put his hands on Crimson. All Crimson was doing was defending himself. Perfectly fine. I mean, if that's your point of view, yes. I mean, he shouldn't have talked. There he is. He, he got punished for it. Brian Castle wanted to talk with him. Brian Castle, as you said, a nice guy. Wanted to say, hey, I've got issues with you, with what you've done to some of the other wrestlers here in PCW. Let's talk about it. Let's be gentlemen. Let's talk about it. Unfortunately, Crimson just is cut from a totally different cloth than yes, anyone else. And that's what happens. Now, I'll tell you what, them eyes are going to be, he's not going to be seeing out no. of the eyes too Oh, we don't even know what's in that, time. we don't even know what's in that mist. It burns, No idea me. what that I've is. I've been on the other end of that, and he shouldn't put his hands on Crimson, and Crimson retaliated, and boom, there you go. Brian, it's your own fault, pal. Go back, put some water in your eyes, and good luck to you. Get out of here. An absolutely heinous attack by Crimson against Toledo's own Brian Castle. Totally undeserved. Uh, and that's why everybody talks about how unpredictable he is, how mysterious he is. You, you just, I don't know how that you deal with crazy, but Brian Castle is going to have to deal with that. And he's going to have to deal with it, we understand, on April the 21st, as those two will be matched up in the ring against each other, Crimson against Brian Castle. All right, we're going to take you to an interview with uh, Sean Boomer Bratton because we talked all last week about the Legion and the Sons of Michigan and how the Sons of Michigan want to get their hands on the Legion, but they can't do it because the Legion has been banned from PCW, but the Sons of Michigan definitely want them back. I don't know if that's a good idea. Let's take you to the interview. This is Sean Boomer Bratton as he talks to the Sons of Michigan. PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. I'm here with the Sons of Michigan. Guys, I want to get right into things because, uh, because we saw what happened the last time at the IBC as Legion all over you at the International Boxing Club. 
Look, don't get me started. What I understand is that Legion has been suspended from action from PCW, from CIW. But the point is, our debut, the Sons of Michigan were coming into PCW to CIW. We were going to make a huge impression. We were going to show everybody what the Sons of Michigan, Amazing Nate Matson, the Big Bear, Benjamin Boone were all about. But instead of having a great victory and a great match with the Thoroughbreds, what we get is Austin Mannix coming out there, distracting us. We've got Legion. We've got all these guys coming in, sticking their nose in our match just because why? Why are you intimidated by us? The Sons of Michigan have a lot of questions. We don't know what's going on. But all I know is April 21st, the next time we're back here, I want Legion. Big Bear wants Legion. The Sons of Michigan versus Legion. I don't care who sets this match up. I want the suspension lifted. Okay, we're here with Percival, their friend. First of all, I want to say something. I am very happy to still be alive after the beating that I took behind uh, a vehicle out there. And Norm got knocked to the ground as well. These guys are unlimited thugs absolutely right straight from the word go and i don't appreciate them not one bit but no it doesn't matter it would, no, it, no, listen. no 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 hey you know what they're trying to make a name at the expense of sons of michigan we want them back i don't care if they're suspended no, we no, want no, them no, back. Hold, hold in, in all due respect and i understand why you guys want a piece of these guys but we're, we're getting tired of getting our behinds absolutely. kicked when we're trying to we're, we're trying to broadcast i mean there is no protection for us whatsoever, and you want these guys back in here that have been roughing us up. I and that's don't not care fair if us. that lawsuit ever gets lifted. And I'll tell you what, you can even talk to Angel Bailey, and she'll tell you the same thing. We don't care whether or not these guys get unsuspended. Who gives a darn? Well, I th you know no. That's the point. We do. we got to make sure this thing gets resolved. We're not going to have somebody jump on our back just because we're new to this promotion. The Sons of Michigan are here to make an impression, and we're going to show everybody. We want Legion on April 21st. We're tired of Legion pushing everybody around here. We are the guys to put them out. We want them back. Well, I think, you know, and, and you brought up uh, Angel Bailey. We need to have Angel Bailey come in. And, and I know I know she's here at the interview uh, the interview area. Angel, if we could get you to come in because you, you've heard everything that's going on. Uh, Legion come trying on. desperately to get here. Some yeah, want him in. Some want him. Don't. We know the Sons of Michigan want him in and they want him on <laughs> April 21st. They're too dangerous. They can't come in. There's. I want to keep them out. I, I know too. what they did to you. I do too. But for I don't what see, they did to I me. don't see how we can bring them back in. It's it's a good thing that you weren't standing out there with Norm and myself. That's not they the point. That's the not the point. Legally, I don't know how we These can get them back are in. Vicious, they're thugs. It doesn't matter legally. We want an action. We want something done. We need answers. Look, I understand. I understand. Let them take care of them. Let them take care of them. Angel, leave it up to the attorneys, let them decide, and then we will make a decision on our own. Well, Please. If you let them back in, then we got to have some kind of protection. If we don't have some kind of protection, we're going to figure out some way to protect I ourselves. Want more security. Because too. I'm getting tired of getting beat up on this show. I'm just a broadcaster, I'm not a wrestler. That's right. And if nobody's going to protect me, then I'm going to do something about it myself. I understand. And I know these guys want at these guys, and they deserve a beat down because of what they did to you. I'm going to talk to the commission, I'm going to talk to the lawyers, and I'm going to see what we can do. I guess, guys, I, I know this isn't what you want to hear. I know this isn't what you want to hear, but based on what, uh, what Angel Bailey is saying, that's the best th th that we can do. That's the best we can do. We can't say anything is concrete for April 21st. That's, as soon as we know, we'll let everyone know. But, guys, that, that's all we can say right now. To the attorneys, please let them be the legal minds that can get us out of this entire mess. I don't like the, the lawless gang, so to speak. I never liked Buck Lawless. He was a big, vicious thug, just like these are, guys are getting to be. And with that T.K. Parker leading them, oh, I leave it up, leave it I up to the attorneys. I understand what the Sons of Michigan deserve a payback. Let us take care of them. Come on, let the suspension, do. let us take care of them. Okay, fans, as soon as we know what officially is going to happen, we will let you know. All I know, though, is the Sons of Michigan want their revenge. All right, coming up next here on PCW, what we've been talking about, the World Heavyweight Championship, the PCW Heavyweight Championship, D-Ray 3000 defending his title against the former champion Andy Shane with Dr. Jerry Graham in his corner, and it just became chaos at the end of the match didn't really make sense. We'll try to make sense of it afterwards, but here it is. It's D-Ray 3000 defending his PCW heavyweight title against Andy Shane with Dr. Jerry Graham in his corner. Yeah. 
the PCW Heavyweight Champion, D-Ray 3000, making his way to the ring. It is a feud over two years in the making. Sean Boomer Bratton, Norm Waymer, Grizzly. I cannot wait for this because this match, so much bad blood between both of these wrestlers. The champion, D-Ray 3000, the challenger is the former champ, Andy Shane, and of course, you've got Dr. Jerry Graham at ringside, Norm. I don't know, Boomer. We'll see if Jerry Graham can actually get Andy Shane to wrestle the way he wants him to. And I tell you, D-Ray 3000 has taken the fight to Andy Shane, not even wasting any time. Andy Shane whipped in off the ropes. Big arm drag, Andy Shane goes down, walks right into another one, Andy Shane is down again. Hip toss, Andy Shane goes up and over. This is going all, oh, and D-Ray goes for the quick pin. Andy Shane is able to kick out. And Andy Shane with an arm drag of his own. Catches D-Ray with a second arm drag. And a hip toss on D-Ray 3000. Andy Shane with arm drags? That's the most technical wrestling I've ever seen Andy Shane do like ever. Well, D-Ray should have the upper hand. He attacked him before the bell. No wonder he's champion. If they cut your hair, wouldn't you do the same thing, Grizzly? Well, it looks like it made an improvement on the man. I figured you would hey, say that. There's a lot of bad blood between these guys. I've never seen so much bad blood, especially since Andy Shane pile drive D-Ray 3000 on the table at the contract signing. Drop to a hole, D-Ray goes down, Andy Shane rolls over. Has him now, trying to wrench in there, working away at that shin lock. Lots of pressure applied there. Again, so much bad blood here. We're not going to see a technical masterpiece. That's why I was kind of surprised to see the hip tosses and the arm drags, especially from Andy Shane. Well, he's got one of the greatest managers that ever walked on the earth, Dr. Jerry Graham. And Dr. Jerry Graham, over the years here in PCW, has really almost tried to, uh, to convert Andy Shane. Norman, I, I, it didn't work. Well, I, I totally believe that Jerry Graham means what he says, but whether Andy Shane will actually listen to him is another story. And D-Ray 3000 goes for the cover, has a leg hooked as well, not able to put him away, would love to get away, uh, it, it, it walk out of this match early. The longer things go, the more they favor Andy Shane, who rolls to the outside. What are we gonna see here? Grizzly, your thoughts? What would you tell Andy Shane if he was your protege? I would tell Andy Shane to take it all the way, straight face, right in the D-Ray, and get rid of him fast. Andy sucks chance right now, Norm. Well, <laughs> I don't, I'm I don't blame him. It took him. so long. After, I, I, after what he's done to D-Ray, he cut his hair, he piled right him on the table at the contract signing. I don't blame him. So we need to talk about this too now as Andy Shane is taking his good old sweet time to get back into the ring. D-Ray kicks him low. Oh, no, he was, he was in the belly button level. Well, Andy clearly can't match speed with D-Ray. He's probably got the speed advantage, but uh, Andy's definitely got the brutality advantage on him. Well, Andy Shane, the master of the underhand attack, just hanging that neck right over that top rope, and Andy Shane rolls in. What's he going to do now? He wants the title back, so he goes for that cover. Referee is right there. So remember the stipulations were years ago, and again, as we talk about how long this feud has been brewing here in PCW, so years ago it was title versus hair. If D-Ray was not able to win the title, then he would lose his hair to Andy Shane. Andy Shane would be able to cut his hair. Well, what's funny about that, Norm, is D-Ray won the match, but yet he still ended up with the haircut. Exactly, which was, which is what uh, intensified the feud. Not, a, not that uh, just battling over the belt is enough, isn't enough to, uh, uh, to battle over. Now you got this on top of it, and then you, now you got the, the, the being pile drive on top of the table at the contract signing where he could have seriously hurt D-Ray 3000. I can't even believe he's here wrestling tonight. Exactly. And he's grabbing his neck right now, and you got to want, there's no way it can be 100%. Well, that European uppercut goes right into that throat neck area, not only hitting you in the upper part of the chest as well. Rolls D-Ray right to the outside, who is right out in front of us. But now his hairstyle is up to date now, so Andy did a good favor for him, so he's now up to date on his hairstyle. Well, the thing with D-Ray and Andy Shane, up and over, oh my goodness, I'm so, I thought he was gonna come through the table. Andy Shane goes up and over. That's how we earn the name Flying Andy Shane. Well, I'm sure Grizzly would have caught him. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yes. Grizzly, that's why you're out here. When that happens, you get in front of uh, us, okay? I'll definitely help you guys out for sure. Uh, good for something. So, and you talk about, now Andy Shane has the title belt, and Dr. Jerry Graham wisely stepping in saying, don't use that. D-Ray tries to fight back. This is right out in front of our table. Both of you keep it clean. Oh! Andy Shane, really on the receiving end of that as Dr. Jerry Graham tries to tell both wrestlers to keep it clean. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah, exactly, we're not gonna see that here. Now Andy Shane. Hey, D-Ray's ticked off and I don't blame him. Well, he should be ticked off. 
He's very ticked off. Oh, great move. Great move. I love that move. D-Ray has so much aggression right now, and, and rightfully so, based on what they did, based on what we saw at the contract signing, based on what we saw with the haircut. D-Ray, rightfully so. You know, if, if D-Ray may be taking a page out of the Andy Shane playbook, has to bend a rule or two here, then that's what he has to do. Well, what, what Andy did was technically legal, but, but Jerry Graham is still uh, berating him, telling him they want to see wrestling. Yeah. They want both of them to keep it clean. And he should be attacking the neck and head of uh, D-Ray there. You know, you always do that. When you see a, a wounded animal, you go after where he's wounded, and that'll help uh, Andy Shane win this match. Is that what you said in your pep talk to him beforehand? Because we saw you talking to Andy before this Absolutely. match happened. You go after that neck and head and get right there. See, that's perfect. Perfect example. Well, and Andy Shane is saying to Dr. Jerry Graham, if he wants to fight, I'll take the fight to him. That's right, D-Ray is not without sin. Yeah, but how do you expect uh, D-Ray 3000 to say, okay, well, I'm going to abide by all the rules and five-count breaks and whatnot after what they did to him, Grizzly? Well, D-Ray, he's broken some rules in his time, and, you know, he's not low angel like Dr. Uh, Jerry just said. D-Ray was able to kick out a two and a half on that one, very close to having a new PCW heavyweight champion. And you know, Norm, uh, as Grizzly was talking up the uh, haircut and how he thinks it looks better, well, D-Ray now purposely keeps his hair short as a reminder. It, it's not just the haircut. That's humiliating to have somebody exactly. shave your head. And you're talking about, you know, the contract signing, the pile driver through a table. That could, they could, that they could permanently, not, not just in someone's wrestling career, it, that could end their life. In all due respect to what Grizzly said, it's not about the haircut. It, it was pure humiliation. That's right, Graham, it's an open hand. And he right now had a steam off the ropes. To. You do what you need to. Delivering another clothesline, bringing Andy Shane back up to his feet, cinching him up for a suplex. Big Look at that! Oh, he got all of that. That's 100% on the suplex. Not enough, putting all of his weight on top of him, even hooking a leg. Not enough. Andy Shane is back up on a clothesline now, almost taking the head off of D-Ray 3000. D-Ray's definitely in some pain there with that neck, and you got to keep attacking that. Well, and he's got to keep going at that neck. And Andy Shane is really focused on that. Going back to the onset of the match, he knows standing prop kick. D-Ray goes into the round uh -oh. three. The referee is dazed right now. Well, this is never good. No, no. And Andy now is bringing D-Ray 3000, tries to get him back up to his feet, but you know, D-Ray, again, you know, that neck, you know, permanent damage. Has him back up now. Goes for the slam. What's he gonna do now? Spins him around. Oh! And then almost like a, a side scoop slam. Well, right on top of the official is right already of dazed. <laughs> I'm not sure he knows where, there's no way, the referee doesn't know where he's at. He has no idea. The referee shouldn't be in the way out there. And now Andy Shane goes up to the top rope. We saw him fly earlier off the top. Oh! Missile drop kick. D-Ray 3000 goes down, he and goes for got, a cover. And they got part of the ref again. And the referee, he what? can barely count right now. Jerry Graham yelling at him to count. The ref has no idea where he's at. There we go, perfect. And there's a three count, and Andy Shane the new PCW champion. A great job by Andy Shane. Andy Shane, oh my goodness, I did not expect that. A nice clean match by Andy. Now look at, see, now D-Ray, come on. Well, D-Ray now goes for a schoolboy. D-Ray goes for a schoolboy. There's the referee, the referee is right there. The referee's not sure what's going on. I'm not even sure what's going on at this point, guys. What? And the referee, what no. the referee is saying that uh, no. D-Ray 3000 is no there? way. Well, we got to see if Norm no Lima can get a clarification on what's going on here. Uh, this is a miscarriage of justice right here. Well, we're trying to get to the bottom of this, Grizzly, is to see what actually happened. Wait, we got to... Norm talking to the referee. Andy's in disbelief. I, I, he pinned the champion. We're trying to figure out what happened. Andy Shane wrestled a clean, scientific... All right, according, according to the referee, the winner of the fall of the match, unbelievable. and still, PCW heavyweight champion, D-Ray 3000. Oh, boy. No. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Everybody saw what happened. Yes. Wait. yes. He pinned him. Where's Angel Bailey? I want the commissioner in this ring right now. 
Where is she? Angel Bailey. This is an outrage. Everybody saw it. Did Andy put him or not? Yes or no? agree with you. No. Well, there are some Andy shots pinned of him. No. The official, the official in the ring said when he came to that D Ray 3000 was on top, counted three in the winner. That is what the official said. That official is an incompetent boob. Thank heavens we got some sanity. You saw what happened. Okay. Change the decision. Give Andy, Andy the belt, the and we belt. can all go home. Right here. First match. First, we're back with first match. You already have a problem. You're causing trouble. I'm causing trouble. Andy pinned him. He pinned him, and then they raised the wrong hand, and I'm causing trouble. Now tell me D. Ray's a good scientific wrestler. He raised the hand of D. Ray 3000. That's what I go by. Listen. Listen, if that's what you're going to do, if you're going to sit here, I'll tell you something, I never liked a woman in charge of this wrestling. Any, you should be home in a kitchen, cooking, cleaning, scrubbing, and changing diapers. Oh that's my what goodness. you should be doing. Well, don't tell me to come up. Dr. Jerry Graham is not a man you want to really tick off, believe me. Well, and Norm Weber is ticking him off right now. Grizzly, this is one time I'm actually happy to be sitting next to you because I would not want to be in there. Oh, we are, oh. He, just, he, he, uh, he leveled I Norm Weber. Oh. It's bad enough when Scott Romer beat him up. And then wow. this. There's a reason why I sit behind the table and don't go in there. And now Jerry Graham's coming our way with Andy Shane. Well, Andy clearly won the match. He clearly won the match. Yeah. They should be walking out with the belt. And now Dr. Jerry Graham talking yes, he with... Did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did, Dr. Graham. The referee, from what we were able to get clarified, the referee, who, who was very groggy... Well, Dr. Jerry Graham getting into it with Percival, a friend right now. The referee, who was very groggy, thought that it was D-Ray 3000 on top, counted the pin. And Get him out of here! Security is finally escorting Dr. Jerry Graham out of here. Well, I just think that was a cheap win for D-Ray, and uh, I've lost any little bit of respect I ever had for the guy. I hope there's a rematch. I really do. I'm sure that one is coming, fans. It's PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. Absolute confusion at the end of the match as I got into the ring to talk to the referee who really didn't understand exactly where he was at by any stretch of the imagination. Doesn't really recall exactly what he did in those closing moments of the match, but told me that the champion still was D-Ray 3000. And obviously that set off a whole nother chain of events as... Dr. Jerry Graham got upset, uh, gave me one right here. Um, I, I, I don't know if a friendship is out the window. It probably is. But there will be a rematch for the PCW Heavyweight Championship coming up on April the 21st. Coming up next, it will be my sit-down, and you'll get some answers from the one and only Dr. Jerry Graham Jr. It's coming up on PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. Somebody's gonna feel this sound!
Somebody's gonna feel this sound. Back we are, PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. I'm Norm Waymer, and as promised, we're joined by the manager of Andy Shane, Dr. Jerry Graham. Andrew Shane. Andrew Shane. It's Andrew we're again. Call him, yes, we're going to call him Andrew because when you say Andy, people think of the little rascals. I mean, this is Andrew Shane. He's a champion before. He's going to be a champion again. And I think Andrew is a much more dignified uh, name. All right. Am I taking my life in my own hands here by sitting next to you after, after what you did at... Uh, at uh, the uh, IBC building? Well, sometimes compromise is part of what we have to do. I was I reacted badly because it was a very, very unfortunate end of that match. And there's a little pushing went on and I may have gone a little bit overboard. A little? A little bit overboard. A little. A little. A little bit overboard, but you did push me first. But anyway. Uh, well, I, that's not true. We actually have videotape on Well, uh, you, you can doctor the tapes all you want, but anyway. Yes, you have nothing to fear from me. We're just going to discuss what's happened. I want you to at least to admit that Andrew Shane got a raw deal. I mean, that's just just admit it. Well, we did. We watched the we watched the match, and there was a lot of confusion at the end. And obviously, the referee had counted three on on D Ray, and uh, he was obviously didn't know where he was at. He really didn't didn't know what he was doing. And it, yeah, it was a tough way to lose a match. I, I that's everybody could see that. Well, you know, oftentimes, I mean, you you cover sports. I mean, I got to respect you as one of the most foremost authorities on sports. And in the NFL and places like that, they have instant replay sometimes. They'll watch a play over again, and they may change a decision based on what they see. All I was asking Angel Bailey to do was the right thing. Andy, he gave him a drop kick, which is a perfectly legal move after a body slam, which is a perfectly legal move after... Uh, Whatever, and more drop kicks. He pins the man for a three count. The referee got knocked down. He was a little confused. Obviously, the proper call would have been to reverse the decision, give Andrew Shane the belt, and then I would have been happy. Right. Well, I, I went and I talked to the referee after the match, because, which was very difficult because he, he was still foggy, groggy, didn't really know where he was at, and he, he told me that it was uh, D-Ray that won the match, uh, unfortunately, with the the PCW bylaws, it's it's in the bylaws that the the referee's decision is final, and and so there wasn't anything I can do. There wasn't anything that the the commissioner could do. We can change the rules going forward, but those were the rules that were in place. Well, you know, I've been watching this Angel Bailey for a long time now, and I've always mended my tongue, kept my opinions to myself. I tried to be a nice guy. People started calling me the elder statesman of wrestling, the grand old man. I was happy with that, but now I'm not happy with that because I've come to a conclusion after a lot of deep thought, debate, meditate, that's no job for a woman. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I mean, a woman should be in the kitchen, cooking, cleaning, scrubbing, having kids, changing diapers, but running a promotion is a man's business. And as a matter of fact, if they want somebody really qualified to take over as commissioner, I'll be more than happy to volunteer for the job. You, you know, after your checkered past, which uh, it was one that you were you were not well liked at all by any stretch of the imagination, and you you had you had kind of become that 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 icon of Toledo where you are the you you were you you turned the corner you you became well liked everybody liked you and now you're just throwing all that away well you know something I don't even like being associated with Toledo I mean it's a town full of hicks I'm from New York City, the Big Apple, the toast of the East Coast. Back in the day, Liza Minnelli and I were the Studio 54 disco dancing champions. I was offered the lead in Saturday Night Fever, but I gave it to Travolta because I was too busy to take the cut and pay. But from now on, it's Dr. Jerry Graham from New York City, the Big Apple. As far as I'm I'm finished with Toledo because they have not showed the proper respect for me. They haven't shown the proper respect for Andrew Shane. And I'm going to tell you something else. If I can just take a little bit, a little bit curve here. A team that I have nothing to do with financially, Legion. Here they are, a viable, qualified tag team. And here's Angel Bailey again with her female hormone going through the roof saying they can't make a living. They have a constitutional right to make a living. We have a constitution. I, I see nothing in their past to deny them from me making a living. And I think this is absolutely just her. I don't know. Maybe she asked one of them for a date and they told her no or something like that. I'm not sure what it was. But uh, I, I have nothing to do with Legion as far as financially concerned. But I do like their manager. Cooper? T.K. Cooper? T.K. Parker. Parker, excuse me. He reminds me of myself when I was his age. A man that knows how to take care of business. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch them from afar because I'm a big fan. But 
things have got to be straightened out around here. And I'm going to tell you something. All, Norm, it's you, whether it's Boomer, whether it's Angel Bailey, when it comes time to cash in your chips, Dr. Graham is going to be your banker. Well, first of all, they, they have a constitutional right to make a living, but not in PCW. There's nothing in the Constitution that says they have the right to make a make a living in PCW. And second of all, they don't have the right to throw me around. They don't have the right to attack me and personal a friend in the parking lot. They have no constitutional right to do any of that. They're fortunate that we didn't press charges and throw them in jail because that's not the way men handle things, and that's not the way people handle things here in PCW. But by all rights, we could have had them arrested and thrown in jail. You know, I agree with that, and I do respect you for wanting to settle like men, but you know something? They shouldn't have hit you, I'll admit that. But, you know, that Percival A. friend, I, I got a kick out of watching him go down because he, he let me face, he says he doesn't trust me. He doesn't. He was right, me. and he was right, and I and I tried to, I, I, I disagreed with him, and I stuck up for you, and, and come to find out, he, he, he was right all along about you. Well, I'm starting right now, I'm putting everybody on notice, an enemies list, Dr. Graham's enemies list. I haven't quite put you on it yet. I'm going to give you a chance to reform. But Percival A. Friend is on that what, list. What, what does reform mean? That means respect Dr. Graham for the superstar that I was, for the superstar that I am, for the impeccable way I have presented myself within the world of professional wrestling. And I expect you... See, and, and, and I've always done that. And for, for... That's why you're on probation. Well, I've always done that. And what did I get for it? I got a, I got a Graham right hand about right here. Boo-hoo, you're still alive. So that meant I didn't hit you as hard as I could. I was just trying to teach you a little lesson for putting your hands on me first. I was defending myself. I could have had you prosecuted. I could have had you arrested. But I didn't because men settle it like men. I'm a good guy. Well, see, we've been friends for a long time. And as far as I'm concerned, you got, you got one free shot. The second one ain't free. Oh, and who's going to cash it in? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. That's the way it is because I'm not, I'm not gonna keep getting, getting knocked around and thrown around and just, and just take it either. So you just, just know that too. Well, if you can't handle it, go home to your mother. I handled it. I'm right here and I'm, I'm sitting right next to you and, and I'm not going anywhere. So uh, we will, we can, we can coexist. We can. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think we're friends anymore. Let's recap. Who needs your friendship? I just want, you want to know Friends? Let me show you what Friends is. Right there is Friends. This is Friends. You see that? That's the only Friends I got in my pocket. See? See? Ben Franklin, see that? See that? That's my Friends. Until you can put some money in my pocket, I don't care if you're my friend or not. Right now, Andrew Shane, when he wins a championship belt, and he will, if more of this in my pocket. If. I already said I would eat Boomer's hat. If he does not walk away with the belt, I will eat Boomer's hat on television. Do you like Rayon? Yeah, well, you can make your jokes now, but you better respect your betters. And that's me. I'm Dr. Jerry Graham, the world's most highly educated wrestler emeritus. Four PhDs, eight master's degrees, 16 bachelor's degrees, 19 associate's degrees in, from colleges and universities around the country and around the world. It's truly safe to say that I have quenched my thirst for knowledge at some of the finest fountains of learning available. And obviously you haven't learned anything from all your past mistakes. I know that you're on the borderline of being on my list. Case closed. It's up to you. Al Percival A. Friend's on my list. Angel Bailey's on my list. That stupid referee's on my list. D-Ray 3000's really on my list. It's my enemies list. I, 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 I look at great Americans and I try to emulate them. So I now have an enemies list. And well, you're not on it yet. Behave yourself. Behave yourself. It's April the 21st as... Uh, I, I, I'm 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 guessing Andy and I'm sorry Andrew uh, gonna get another shot or, or what, what's gonna happen April the 21st? He's got the shot. It's already written in. Its contracts are signed, and he's gonna win the championship. It's that simple. I am known for success. I am known for producing. Andrew Shane wouldn't pay me to be his manager if he didn't know. And I, I, I wanted to apologize to Andrew for even trying to represent before two guys at once, Bobo Brazil uh, Jr total uh, basket case. Uh, it wasn't worth my time. But now it's just Andrew Shane and Dr. Graham. That's my only function in PCW is to manage Andy Shane. Norm, just behave yourself. You, you know, at some point, you're going to have to look Bobo in the eye and say that. I'm not worried about Bobo. He's a decrepit old man right now. He doesn't bother me at all. But Norm, I'm going to leave the set right now because uh, uh, I've had enough of you. I want you to contemplate your sins. I want you to contemplate your discretions, indiscretions against me, and maybe, maybe I'll let you be my friend again. Well, it's it's amazing what 
uh, competition and a title and obviously money, how it can change a man or make him revert back to where he was. Dr. Jerry Graham, he will be managing Andrew Shane as he challenges once again for the PCW Heavyweight Championship against Steve Ray 3000 coming up on April the 21st. It's at the International Boxing Club, 525 Earlwood Avenue in East Toledo, Oregon, right off a of star in I-280. And who knows what's going to happen, but you're not going to want to miss it. Somebody's going to feel this sound. Video Game Underground, with one of the best selection of Xbox, PlayStation 1 and 2, Nintendo GameCube, DVDs, and much more. Video Game Underground, Toledo's only source for import and classic video games, DVDs, all used DVDs, 8 bucks or less. Video Game Underground, 2039 West West Road, just west of Miracle Mile. Phone 419 472-5443. Your career will occupy one-third of your life. Shouldn't it be fun, profitable, and secure? The Toledo Academy of Beauty has successfully trained over 10,000 graduates in the cosmetology industry. Call 419-478-6660 for a free brochure. We also offer beauty services by supervised students. Even professional wrestlers like Dr. Jerry Graham is a client. Have fun, be cool, choose the right beauty school. It's Toledo Academy of Beauty. All right, that'll wrap up another great edition of PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. Coming up on next week's show, you will see the debut of Terror Khan as he takes on Diamond Couture, a former member of CIA. Also on the card, you on next week on the show, I should say, that you will see the very first CIW Championship match on TV as Sean Casey will challenge Sebastian Rose. Also, we'll get the latest on the Sons of Michigan's push to get the Legion in, reinstated into PCW. And also, I will have a sit-down next week, an exclusive sit-down with Andrew Shane, who will be challenging D-Ray 3000 for that PCW Heavyweight Championship coming up on April the 21st. It will be at the International Boxing Club, 525 Earlwood in East Toledo. Bell time is at 5 o'clock. The doors will open at 4. Don't forget, you can follow along with PCW on Facebook at Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. You can also see past episodes of PCW on that Facebook page if you want to get a hold of us. If you want to advertise here on PCW, just contact us on our Facebook page at Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. But remember, as always, it's not PC, it's PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. We'll see you next week.